All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Car. Rich Walsh alongside Ron Cook. And if you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting. When I need a roof, that's the place I'm going to call. 1-800-NEW-ROOF. Not only do they do roofs, they do siding, they do gutters, they do windows. Anything you need, number one in Pittsburgh, 1-800-NEW-ROOF. And you can give us a call at 412-575-2600 on the Bordas and Bordas hotline. Before we get to the phone lines, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Big Al Vento. Uh, Ron Cook has a great story about him. He just passed away this week at the age of 89, and he was one of the founders of a, Franco's Italian Army. Yes, now, I know Al's son really well, uh, Al Vento. We both golfed together at Edgewood Country Club, and then I met Big Al a couple times, heard nothing but great things about him. And, you know, it, he... Yeah. East Liberty, and it's one of the greatest sports heirs in Pittsburgh history, I would imagine. And he's a big uh, peripheral part of it. Apparently, you know, he had a, a pizza shop in East Liberty. That area, Franco Harris, they became friends in his rookie year. Uh, you know, that was back in the day where everybody, uh, Lambert had the lunatics, Jarella had the gor uh, gorillas. So they started a Franco's Italian Army. And uh, Al Vento and uh, Tony Stagno organized this. So now they're playing late in the year at 72. And, and San, uh, Palm Springs are preparing for the last game uh, out there because the weather was bad here in Pittsburgh. They're out to dinner. Myron Cope runs into Frank Sinatra. A great, Frank Sinatra is bigger than anybody on earth uh, at that point. Cope sends over a, a, a napkin saying, hey, stop over and meet the guys from Pittsburgh. Sinatra comes over. Uh, Cope presents to him, why don't you come out to practice tomorrow? We'll induct you into Franco's Italian Army. He said, okay. So now Cope runs to the phone, calls Al Vento and Tony Stagna. Stagno, they get a they get a flight somehow uh, to Palm Springs overnight. Make it. They're on the practice field. They don't even know if Sinatra is going to show up. He shows up. Now they don't know if Chuck Knoll is going to let him interrupt practice to have this ceremony. And uh, Joe Gordon, uh, the longtime PR guy, the best in the business, uh, was on with us today, and he said. Chuck couldn't have stopped it if he wanted to. Cope just took over. Sinatra's on the field with Franco, who doesn't know really what to do. He's a rookie. Uh, and, the, and the two guys from Pittsburgh, his co-founders of the Italian Army, inducted uh, Sinatra into, uh, into the Franco's Army. Uh, Cope, to his dying day, said it was the greatest coup of his life. What a great story. That is a, what a great story. story. Frank Sinatra, you don't realize he was as big as Elvis back then. I mean, he was like the number one entertainer in the world, and he comes to a Steelers practice. He'd be like Justin Timberlake showing <laughs> up. Or Justin <laughs> Bieber, uh, maybe. Yeah, not quite, no. <laughs> not quite like that, no. Yeah, I mean, I know Al, uh, his son tells me stories all the time. And, uh, you know, I don't remember Franco's Italian Army because I wasn't born, but um, oh, I did I read about it, and, and, you, and you hear and stories. And Franco was good son. friends with them the rest of their life. I mean, he, he, he was close to those guys, but to get Sinatra, and they, they gave him like a, a helmet, like from combat helmet, to signify that he was in Franco's Italian Army. <laughs> That's amazing. And then they, next week was the Immaculate Reception, and started off a dynasty. Yeah, it did, and, and you go into Vento's Pizza, which is down in East Liberty, and there's, there's is pictures. Is it still of, there? Yes, it's still there. A new building, it, good, good pizza, too. Yeah, and it's, um, I would recommend going there. There's pictures of Franco all around, and um, if you can somehow get back, if Al will take you back in the office, I know there's pictures of memorabilia from Franco Harris. Great so, story. Yeah, my condolences again to the, the, the Vento, Vento family. family. All right, um, we're going to head out to the phone lines right now, and we got um, out in Butler. How you doing, Matt? Hey, guys, that is a great story. I, that's a very enjoyable story you guys just had on. That's great. Hey, uh, as far as the Bucks go, and I know they have a five-game series coming up against uh, Milwaukee, I think, here at home. But they'd have to take four. They'd have to take the next four series to even get back to 500. I think that's just so highly unlikely, given the talent on this team, specifically around pitching, starting and middle relief, and who knows about Vasquez, but. I just think it's so unlikely, and they're just not going to trade to bring somebody in. Now's the time if they thought they were going to make a run. They're just not going to do it, and we know that. Yeah. History is going to repeat itself again and again and again with that team. All right. yeah, I can't argue with any of that. I think it's going to be hard, too, to get back to 500. But if they'd have lost last night, I definitely would have said it. Let's see. You know, now you've got to win series. As you said, you keep taking series, okay. You get back to 500 by the All-Star break. 
see what happens in the second half. Uh, I'm not optimistic they're going to bring anybody in here either. I get the pain, the frustration, all of that. But all I'm saying is last night was a real nice win for them against a bad team to score four in the ninth to win it. I was impressed. Let's talk about another bad team, San Diego. That's a team, that's a series where they won the first game, that four-game series. That's really what, three in a what, row. Turned, what turned. Started them down, yeah. the, down the wrong way. You're absolutely right. So, you know, say they take two or three San Diego. Then they have to go to L.A., which they're not going to win that series. And then Philadelphia, another good team. So even if they do get back to 500, like you pointed out earlier, that's mediocre. That's average. That's not even good. Yeah, but 500 will get you in the hunt for the wild card. Yeah. Down could. the road, it'll get you in the hunt. If you, I mean, you're not going to be able to get in at 81, but if you can win a few more games, you have a shot. And I'm not, I, please, I'm not saying they're going to be a wild card team because I don't think they're good enough. I'm just saying last night was important. I'm going to give them a chance to see what they do this weekend and then make another decision Sunday night. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. We got Mark out in Duncansville. How you doing, Mark? Hey, I'm doing great. How about you? Good. Thanks for calling. Great. Uh, you guys, uh, I don't know if the other callers or people listening know, but of course I can hear your conversation in the commercials. And uh, it was an outstanding story. Thank you for telling that. Yep. Uh, my point goes to uh, agreement with Ron that uh, I was at the Diamondbacks game on Sunday. Awful. And, yeah, and here's the thing. Uh, I went with a social club uh, on a bus trip. That I won't even name the club. It doesn't matter. Normally, the bus is full. Everyone's having a good time, ready to go see the bus. And 12 people showed up uh, to go. And uh, it was awful. And it was an awful game. And, I mean, other than getting to PNC Park, my gosh, uh, you're right. We're, we're on a slide. Rich, I know you're optimistic. That's great. <laughs> I, I try to be. I uh, appreciate the call, Mark. I mean, uh, the one thing maybe I can ask you here, Ron, is, you know, what will this do if, if they continue to go the direction they're going? What's this going to do to ticket sales next year? I mean, they're already down about 30%. I oh, mean, yeah. what, how much lower can you go? Yeah, I mean, it depends what they would do after the season if they try to beef up the roster. I think most tickets are sold in January and February. And where were they in January, February this year? Everybody was outraged about Garrett Cole, about McCutcheon. No one bought the tickets back then, and I think you're going to see the result of that all year. Uh, depending on where they finish, uh, if they make some moves in the offseason, maybe get people excited, but th they have a real long road ahead to try to get people back. Well, we know the moves are, that they're going to make. I mean, they're going to get rid of Jordy Mercer. At least they have to. Yeah, he's I mean, a free agent at yeah, the end of the year. That, that makes sense at the trade deadline, especially if you're out of it. You got Harrison it. and Cervelli make a lot of money. Um, they're still under contract for next year. Dickerson, Freeze, maybe. Uh, and Dickerson, perhaps. Um, if they continue to slide and they're out of it, I think anybody's just about to Nova would be another guy. Yep. I mean, uh, all those guys you could see potentially moved at the trade deadline, which I would not mind if they got good returns and there's some optimism uh, for the next couple years. Right, and they're building. truthful about what they're doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, we got to take a break. Uh, back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.